Hey guys, Mr. Luke here, and welcome to another episode of the FIFA 16 My Player series with Luke Adenio. Now, this episode is going to be a good one in particular as we go over the transfer deadline day. Now, there actually is an interview scheduled for him straight after deadline day, sort of talking about you know, why he stayed or why he left, and just giving an all-round interview, really. But we'll, uh, we'll see that in a second. I'm going to hand you over to Luke Adenio for the time being, and he's going to take you through the next few days. Okay, so the 30th. We've got one more day. I just want to show the ins and outs of our side. Now, obviously, we have 19 million to work with. Sommer. Look, I can't say I was the biggest fan of Sommer, but it's absolutely ridiculous that we've had 19 million. We started with 19 million. It's a huge fee for a goalkeeper. We haven't brought in anyone else to uh, to replace him. It's just it's ridiculous to me. It does make me question why I'm staying, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be staying. Oliveira, 13 and a half million. I wonder if that's Paulo Oliveira. That sure is Paulo Oliveira. What a signing that is. That's a brilliant signing, actually. A lot of my gripes with the side has been due to the fact that our defense has been atrocious. And this should show it up a little bit. He looks like a great player. Although we have signed center back, it has shored up our defense a little bit. I still feel we're overall maybe a little bit weaker because of our keeper situation. Um, I can really see teams popping in huge long shots against us. Sort of look at Daniel West goals. It's due to the fact that their keepers, our keeper is really bad. Come on, two hours left, please, for love of God, sign a keeper. Okay, moment of truth. One hour to go. Will we sign a keeper? No, we didn't sign a keeper. Fucking hell. Okay, so I just read this article, and it said, Unfortunately for striker Luca Dino, the last transfer window did not go quite as he had planned. After requesting a transfer, Luca Dino thought a move in the transfer window was on the cards, but with no bid forthcoming, Luca Dino would now have to wait half a season until the window reopens. No one knows what the future holds, but sources close to Luca Dino claim he may reconsider his future given his failure to secure a move. What the actual fuck? I wasn't even requesting a transfer, as you can see. Haven't requested shit. What the fuck are these cunts on about? Anyways, better go do me interview. We're very excited to be bringing you an exclusive interview with one of the hottest young footballers in the world. It's Luca Dino. How are you going, Luke? Nice way to start the interview, man. You know, I, I was with you up until you said one of rather than the best. And then, and then you followed up with calling me Luke. My name is Luca Dino. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, sorry about that, Luca Dino. <laughs> nah, it, man, it's, it's cool. Call me Luca. Okay, Luca. Ash actually, no, call me Dino. So you want me to call you Dino? I feel we have a strong enough relationship that you can you can call me that. Actually, uh, on second thought, you know, just call me Luca Dino. Now the reason for this interview is pretty clear. The transit window has just shut, and you are still at Muchen Gladbach. Rumors were circulating that you wanted out. Any truth to those rumors? Those rumors were just that. Th they're just rumors. You know, the, the thought of leaving honestly never even entered my mind. I, I love the club. I love the fans, and most importantly, I love the colours the club uses, you know, the green, white, black, yellow. I mean, the kits, they look nice. You know, top players never play for a club with a poor kit, and that's a fact. I didn't even think I even said anything, you know, even as a joke about leaving. Uh, I don't know where the insiders get the information, uh, you know, where do they get them from, because the rumours, you know, they were false. That is good to hear. Would you ever consider coming back to the A-League at some point in your career? Ooh. Look, the A-League gave me a start, and I'm grateful, but why would I come back? I can't say I enjoyed my time at CD, and you know that's why I moved on quickly. And I don't want to be remembered for going to retire in the Australian League. You know I'm too good for that. Now another big talking point for you lately was the injury. Talk us through that. Well, basically I made a great run, and you know I was brought down in the box. And initially I was thinking, you know, it's a penalty, but then my attention quickly turned to the pain in my ankle. You know, really it was just a standard tackle, and my ankle just got caught up. Uh, I will say that the opponents were taunting me all game, saying that they'll soften me up. Uh, so take that for what you will. Are you saying that it was intentional? Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I, you're saying that. You've said that you thought your career might have been over. Is that not a bit over the top? What, what, what sort of question is that? Like, Would it be over the top if I uppercut the f*** out of you right now? Yes, yes it would. Well, don't push me. Don't worry, I won't. A lot of fans were upset at your injury. Even going as far as to crying in the stands. How did that make you feel? Honestly, their reactions, it reflected how I felt inside, so, you know, so I wasn't really surprised. I'm a hero to many, and, you know, when your heroes go down, so do their dreams. Uh, what did shock me were the messages of support I got from people in countries like Bangladesh and New Zealand from the parts that my servant could read. They, they were very touching. I, I'm just joking about the servant part, by the way. You recorded yourself watching back some videos of your injury and some reactions, and the reaction in particular that got a lot of attention was the period with one. Rumors were flying that you two must be a couple. Is this true? It definitely false. Uh, to tell you the truth, I haven't actually met her before. Although I do expect to meet her at some stage, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to ask me about the actual reaction itself, so I'll just answer it now. Yes, it did upset me, but 
you know, she had the other girls there to console her, which was, which, which was good, and, uh, you know, I've spoken to all four of them after, and I told them that they handled it as good as anyone can. Uh, I told Pez that I was okay, and, you know, I'm ready to rap on the next album. Pez? Fuck her. I've said too much. Move on. Do you fix yourself as a rapper? Oh, 100%, mate. Hear me out. I've got a little rap for you. My name is Luca Deno, and I'm a sick cunt. It's no fluke Deno that I'm a sick cunt. Word life. That was amazing. Now back to the football. Internationals, they don't happen often for the soccer rules. Are you excited to play again for the national side? Oh, for sure. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to play in a, in a classy side like Australia? You look like you wanted to laugh while saying that. Did you just listen to what I just said? Of course it was a joke. Look, I love Australia as a country, but a, a team, quite frankly, it sucks. Uh, the only positive is, is that it's a chance to show all the teams around the world that I can carry the team. I'm sure the players are loving what you were saying here. Really, this is mainly aimed at the manager. Ange, he's just an idiot. And, you know, it's a sham that he left me out of the squad for ages. I was, I was insulted. Well, that's where this interview will end. Not the best thing to end on, but it's been an interesting interview. Any final words? Ballon d'Or. I'm coming for you. Also, shout out to Adidas. I prefer Nike, but you're paying me, so uh, yeah, shout out for you for being cool. Okay, a game against Stuttgart. I'm actually feeling very, very confident going into this game. Our form's been phenomenal lately, and you know, I'm the prince of popping in goals. Shouldn't have no problem doing it against Stuttgart. What a stadium that is. It's such a beautiful stadium. I really like the colours that we use. Green, the black, everything. It just looks so nice. It feels so right. My only gripe is that there's still no lights. What the actual hell? And there we go, sixth spot. We could be in fourth spot after this game. Fair enough, I'll give Oliveira his time. It's his moment, his de debut. I had my moment when it happened, although, you know, every game with me in it, I really am the player to watch officially. Well, maybe not officially, but everyone knows it. Who cares about our team lineup? All that matters is that I'm playing and Oliveira is playing. Should mention, it's raining. How fucking annoying is this shit? Well, back oh, you fucked up now! There. Oh shit, no you didn't. Unlucky. Don't worry, I was only mucking around. Yes! Keeper! Thank you. That's better service than fucking Summer's ever done. Why are you shooting? Who told you to shoot? Is the coach instructed you to shoot? Because if he did, put a bullet in him. Shoot that. Whoa, that is a massive transfer. But, i got to ask, why why not come in for me? Just an offer. you got the money laying around, boy, and why not come in for me? Doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, that's a money ball. No, it's not. That's a shit ball. i got to say, this has been such a shit half of football so far. Half isn't over, but fucking hell. So boring. I'm almost going to sleep up here up front. I have no involvement in the game because I don't even touch the ball. Our midfield loses it before it gets to me. And you can see there, possession-wise, 60% Stuttgart. They're just passing it around, doing absolutely nothing with it. But nonetheless, just passing it around, boring us out of the game. Maybe their tactic is they'll get us to fall asleep, and then they'll go and score. What a fitting way to end the half, just kicking it straight out. This is ridiculous. That was a shit half. That's all I've got to say about that. Great determination to get to that ball. <laughs> I've always thought this is funny about this guy. He's a keeper, but he's about five foot five. It's it's so funny. I remember training, just being able to chip him all the time. It's just so funny seeing him play. He's like a little midget. Goal news involving the Beltins Arena. Fucking hell, he's holding me off. Elbows, everything. I think I just caught one in the face too. I'm sure I did. Fucking hurts like it. Fucking hell. So many people to pass through and you pass it out. Like, really? You're a professional player. What the fuck was that? Yep. 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 Here we go. Counter attacks on. Make the run! There you go. This is great play from us. Yep, play it to me. Fucking hell! Play it to me! The right person! I was right there, I asked for it, I said play it to me, and you fucking just refuse. You should be hooked immediately for that. Yeah, here we go. There's a turn. Boom! Get out of the way! Why the fuck are you crowding the box, you piece of shit? Yep, here. Oh shit, he punched him in the face, that's a penalty. In the fucking air, for fuck's sake! Why would you pass it on the ground like that?
Here we go. There's the ball. Shoot! You gotta score! Fucking hell! You had to score! There's a pass back! It's a penalty! It's a pass back, man. Fucking robbed! We're fucking robbed. Fuck still got in their defensive dipshit display. All they do is just set up to defend. Fuck them. They don't even try to win. Waste time from start to finish. No respect for teams like that. The less said about that game, the better, in my opinion. Manager praises outstanding look at Daniel performances. Once again, mate, I don't like you. Why the fuck are you still talking about me? I'm just doing my best on the pitch. Um, really, uh, your managing is quite appalling, to be honest. If you had any ounce of managing talent, you would know that, you know, play me a lone striker. Uh, just get me the ball at all times and just let me do my thing. And tell them to stop shooting the fucking ball in stupid places. Hey guys, Mr. Luke here, and I understand that it was a bit of a short episode, but, you know, it was quite an eventful one in terms of, you know, transfer window and is he going to stay, is he going to go? Uh, but obviously he's made a decision to stay. He had his interview, gave his reasons. But uh, yeah, that's where the video is actually going to end. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter at MrLukeMIT, Facebook page in the description below, and I'll see you for the next video.